Hi guys, I hope you're all well. So I thought I'd do another uh, Ramadan lesson and I thought I'd use some different types of inspiration to do this lesson. So we're going to look at one of my favorite artists, Henry Matisse, The King of Color. And this is one of my favorite books, uh, Henry Matisse, The Cutouts. And it's basically about his decoupage work. For those who don't speak French, it means uh, collage, basically. So he had a really amazing technique and he developed this technique when he was much older and quite ill at the time and he used to work from his scissors, my favourite, with his scissors. So he, he went around with these big pair of scissors everywhere. But this is a stage where he was very sick and he used to work from his bed. I'm trying to find one of those pictures for you. So this is Matisse working from his bed. Can you see that? So that's when he was working from his bed. So he was quite a jolly person and he's, refer he's referred to as the king of colours uh, because of his beautiful use of colours as well and he went against the norm during that period and used colours. So this was a bit of genius for him. So when he was sick he basically covered the walls of his house with his decoupage and he had an assistant that he drove insane and he would say pin it up there and pin it down here and he had this long stick with a pencil at the end of it and he would draw on the pencil at night so she'd come back in the morning and find all the all this work for her to do so this is some of his decoupage so the technique that he used was that he would paint sheets of paper uh, in colors that he was very accurate about and very bright colors and then he would turn these into like abstract uh drawings so what we're going to do what we're going to use this to this technique today in creating a mosque collage Okay, so these are some of his brighter collages and he's been a massive inspiration for those of my work and those of my teaching and it's a fantastic technique. So it's collage, decoupage in French and he used scissors were his main tool in this as well so he created a lot of this using scissors. So we're going to do that today. I'm going to do some colour mixing, I'm going to show you what we do with the three primary colours and how important they are. So they're red, yellow and blue. And they are the three most important colours in the world because they make all the colours in the world. And then we're going to add a bit of black and we're going to add a bit of white and that's going to give us a shade or a tint. So we're going to mix the colours about. We're not going to go too much in detail about that today because our lesson will be more to do with the decoupage. So the first stage is, uh, I've just got lots of scrap paper from around the house that we've got, letters, whatever it is that you've got. And we're going to paint them or colour them using oil pastels or markers or you can draw patterns on them with pen if you don't have any colours at the moment, crayons, pencil colours, whatever it is that you've got at home you can use. Today I found a bit of paint in our storage so we're going to use that and we've got the primary colours. So we're going to move on to the table to show you what we're going to do with the colours. Okay guys, so these are three primary colours. So I had this paint running... Um, lying around in the hat in this storage. There's yellow, red and blue. And the mo they're really important because they cannot be made but they make all the other colours. So for example if I take yellow and red and mix them together I get orange. So add a bit more yellow there I get orange. So that's the first colour that we've made. If I mix blue and red together, a bit more red, I get purple, so mix it really well. It's giving me a purple there. And obviously you can add more red or more purple. Oh, you want to say I'm gonna add a bit more, sorry, more blue to make it a darker purple and more red to make it like a burgundy or wine coloured purple. And we're going to move on to the yellow and blue and they are going to make green. So those are the three primary colours. Okay. And those are the colours. So now 
these three primary colors so red yellow and blue and then they've made the secondary colors which are now purple orange and green so let me just make you a little map here so i have made so i have yellow i have blue i have red and then i've mixed these two they've made an orange I've mixed these two, they've made a purple, and I've mixed these two, and they have made these two, sorry, and they've made a green. Okay, so that's the start of the lesson. I thought I'd give you a little bit of colour information there. Now, if I were to divide this into two, so this one is shades, and this one is tints. So always remember shades with dark or wearing sunglasses, your shades, and tints with brightness, so light, sunshine, that always makes the colour bright or light. Okay? So. Oh, God. Well, so I'm going to show you how to do uh, shades and tints with red. So we're going to take red, I'm going to put a little blob there, take a little blob here, and we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to make a family of shades of red and a family of shade of tints of red. So what you do is take a little bit. Mix it. This is a dark shade. Then I take more red. Put it there. Gonna add this time just a little dot, tiny little dot of black. Mix it in. It's a bit similar to the purple that we just made. I'm going to take a lot of red and just a touch of black. You can already see the differences. So we've got really dark red there, we've got medium darkness and we've got a lighter darkness here. So the more black you add, the darker the shade will be. Then on this side, it's my tints. I'm gonna make one of my favorite colors, pinky pinky. Make sure your brush is clean and always change your water if it gets murky. Okay, so I've got one blob of white and one blob of pink, one blob of red, and it's gonna make my first pink. You see the difference there? So these are just three colors that we use and we're making all these colors from them. There's a beautiful pink there. Then I'm going to add more white and just a baby touch of red and that should give me a brighter. Mm, really nice light pink color like that. Mix it well. Don't leave any streaks. And then I'm going to try a bit more red. So you play around with how you want it to be. And you can make these families with all the colours. So we have made, see there's a darker pink there. So we have literally used black and white on red and we've made one, two, three, four, five, six colors you can make loads more with different colors with the red and the yellow and the blue make lots of different shades now we're going to go on to our decoupage bit which is the fun bit and we are going to paint sheets of scrap paper and we're going to let them dry and then we're going to cut them out into our shapes to make our mosque so i've got different types of brush here. i've got a thin brush to make marks with uh, i have got a 
wide angled rectangular kind of brush as well to give me straight line strokes. I've got a heavy duty brush and I've got this lovely rectangular one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the surface area of this paper. So I'm going to, don't need to use the whole thing in one colour. I'm going to cut it like that and I'll use this bit first and I'm going to go with a red first and the reason I'm using a big brush is because it covers the surface area much quicker and I put some plastic we didn't have any plastic bags so we had to use some of the recycled plastic bags in our cupboard so just cover the table so you don't make a mess for your mum and dad and they don't come and kill me afterwards I've done the surface area. Now Matisse would just paint one colour, he wouldn't do any patterns on top of it. But one of my other favourite artists, Eric Carl, who does children's books, would do some textures. So I am going to take some white and I'm going to do some spots, some randomly spots on it to give it a different texture. So I want that. I'm going to use some of the darker colour that I made at that end as well go around so that's one side has this little feathering texture on it and then on the other side I'm going to use some blue I'm going to do some circles which are weaving into each other nothing has to be perfect that's what's great about this you can just play around however way you like And there, and then I think I'll add some yellow dots in the middle there. Always um, make sure that your wrist movement is how you control your brush. Don't press too hard, always think your wrist is like a butterfly, not a stomping elephant. Right. I'm going to add a bit of yellow there, a bit more blob, and then I'm going to let that dry, a bit more texture in there. Make sure you've covered all of it because if you don't use it for this art lesson, you can always use it for another one as well later. Might add a few more marks there. Okay, I'm going to mix a nice green colour for my dome on my mask. So, my blue. I'm going to add some yellow. Goes into a nice green already. Lovely green. Really nice, we want it to be a bit more turquoise, I can add a bit of blue into it. Got a nice turquoise green there. Now, what I want to do is make it lighter, so I'm just going to take a bit of white, make it a lighter green, to be a bit brighter, some yellow. There I go. Then I'm going to paint that. It's going to be my new surface. It doesn't have to be perfect when you're painting this, of course. Just make sure you're using up the paint that you've got. Don't waste. If you go all the way around the edges, if you need to turn the paper around while you're working, do that so that you can work easily. Now, like I said, if you don't have paints at home, you can use whatever colours that you've got to paint to colour the surfaces. You can use letters that are unwanted by your parents. Make sure they're unwanted by your parents. Don't use things that they haven't read. Don't touch things that you're not supposed to, please. 
and what I think I'm going to do with this one is do like a crisscross design, like a hatch design. I might do that with some black. Go down. with some red. This is a crisscross design. Very easy. Don't be scared because people are always ask me, can I use a ruler? No, you don't need to use a ruler. You train yourself how to make straight lines and circles. Simple. Some more colour to that. There we go. A bit more. This kind of a weave, paint weave. Leave that to dry. Pause. I always like to use yellow because yellow always brightens up any artwork. So I'm gonna do that there and then take some white and do like a swirly, whirly sunshine. Put a red into there. That's always gonna give me some brightness once it's dry. So that was a nice and easy one. Can you see the way that the rectangular brush line goes like that? It's really good. It's the reason you have it. You can also do finger painting if you like. Have your parents' permission to do that. And I'm going to do a pinky winky one. So if you ever buy paints, I wouldn't go and buy a whole big set. You really only need red, yellow and blue and white and black. And then the rest of the colours you can make yourself, which is really cool. And then if you want to remember the recipes, I've used paper plates. So when the paint dries on it, I can keep a record in my sketchbook of how I made those colours. So I can make, after it dries, I can make little notes on the paper plate and keep it and that will remind me how I made the colour. Doesn't matter if it's streaky. The nicer the texture. A bit of red into there. Just to make it look more three dimensional. Then I think I'll use a nice light blue. Do that. Might make it a bit turquoisey, so add some green to it. Hmm, might go purpley, so if I want to make it purpley, add some red, might give you a nice lilac. one of Picasso's favourite colours that he used in one of his collections in his older age. It's a lot of this purple colour. lilac -y purple. Don't know why, but he did. I love this colour. There you go. Stop. 
Hi guys, so we're back for the other part of the lesson uh, and we uh, were talking about Henry Matisse, one of my favourite artists who does the cutouts and we're using his technique to create a Ramadan mosque. So these are some of his collages or decoupages that he did and this is from his cutouts exhibition. So everything in this book is cutouts. I think he produced thousands of cutouts in the last 10 years of his life while he was sick in bed. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a similar technique. I showed you this morning how to paint the sheets and now they're dry. So these are all the sheets of colours that we've got. So I made a lovely pink, I made a nice bright yellow, and I've got a blue, and I've got this, and I've got that, and I've got this. And now we're going to make a very nice landscape mosque scene that we're going to share with our family. So you can do you can do portrait and you can do landscape. You can do whichever way that you want to do. But I think today I might do landscape. Okay. So I'm going to show you how it goes, and we're just going to use our imagination. We are going to use shapes. So we'll probably just use semicircle. We'll use squares. We'll use a um, the crescent, which is a very Islamic shape. So we're going to use that as well, and we will add some stars. So we shall begin. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a technique. I'm going to use collage, but I'm also going to do some painting on the picture to zhuzh uh, up a little bit. So using different techniques, not just using collage and using painting, collage and drawing uh, is mixed media. So we're going to be doing mixed media. But the main basis of our lesson today will be collage or decoupage as Matisse used to use. So we shall begin. What you will need for this lesson is a A4 sheet of paper. Uh, you can use anything that you've got at home. If you don't have A4, you can use smaller, you can use bigger if you've got A3, that's fantastic. And you will need the scraps of paper that we spoke about earlier. And I have decorated them before, they've dried nicely, so they're ready to go. And I always have scrap pieces of paper lying around that I've painted and decorated in case I want to use them for collages, etc, etc. So that's ready. You will need a pair of scissors, a pencil, ooh, masking tape maybe, uh, a rubber and glue stick and of course my favorite permanent marker love this okay we're ready to begin okay guys so i'm going to work really organically here i don't want to make things too restricted so we're just going to have some fun that's the main thing so i'm going to do is i'm going to make the first part of the mosque which will probably be a square so i'm just gonna draw out how i want it to look so i'm gonna have it like that it's my little square my little rectangle shape there as well so and then i'm gonna draw my minaret my little crescent minaret here and the crescent again bring this down a bit and i have a little Present going there and some lovely little stars so this is just my plan this isn't this isn't how it's gonna be this is just the idea for myself so that I can use this as my guideline and I know where I'm going and I don't panic yeah so I've decided for a night scene as you can see because I've got stars and my crescent my half a moon so what we're gonna do is uh, so I'm going to measure this with my eye, so it's just a normal square there, it doesn't have to be perfect, so don't panic. And then I'm going to cut down, I'm going to use every single bit of paper that I've got, I'm going to cut that way, and I think that should fit, oh perfect, that's fit in perfectly. And I'm going to draw a little door for the mosque, and I'm going to cut that out. As so you can use every tiny little bit that you've got. I'm going to stick that onto there so it's the start of my mosque. Don't worry if you've never done this before, it's not meant to be scary, it's meant to be fun. Okay, stick it down. I always like to give my paper a massage so it sticks down and then turn it around. That just makes sure that the paper is straight and sticks down. Now I'm going to do my dome. I'm going to the stripy green colour, so I'm just going to look at that and see. 
that's just about right I'll make a little line there and that's how my dome will go it doesn't have to be perfect you can measure it by eye children are always much better at this than adults to be honest from my experience and that's my dome beautiful little dome stick that on there as well And then there's normally like a little circle in between, so I think I'm going to do a little circle, snip some red, draw my little circle on the back of there, cut that out, and so, beautiful little circle, itsy bitsy teeny weeny baby. Stick that there. And then I might do a little line, just chop, so just chop away, go back to the bits of paper that you've got, stick that there, and remember it's not dry so you could always just push it under so it looks professional. And then I'm going to do my crescent, I think I might do a pink crescent, so I'm just going to cut myself a little bit like that, I'm going to draw my crescent. Also, cut my crescent out. And stick the crescent on top of here. Yes, so. How pretty is that? Then I'm going to measure a long rectangle to go there. And I think I'm going to go back so I can match it. Maybe I will use some of this pattern dread. I've got two patterns that I've done. So I've got this feathery one and the circles one. I think I might use this one. So I'm going to chop that. And it doesn't have to be straight, as you can see. Make it a little bit skinnier. Chop there. And then I'm going to stick it. So it's a bit thicker than the original shape, but that's okay. So I go from point to point and then I do half a circle to the other point. Nice and easy, not too difficult. And then cut it out. Stick it down there. Perfect. Give it another little massage. Tummy massage. Stick it back. And then I'm going to do my second crescent. So again, I'm going to do a little line. This time I think I'll use a bit of the red. Push it in. Do my little crescent again. And do a yellow crescent this time. find it difficult to draw a crescent, you can draw half a circle and then go inside it like that, like a happy mouth, 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 sorry not mouse even, that little mouse, mouth, mouse, mouth, mouth, that's it, stick that on, there's my other crescent, how pretty is that, now we're going to make a big crescent, there and I think I might use my light blue so I'm going to do that so that's about right measure it that way that way probably Just stick it down on the paper and see and then measure it with your eye so I'm going to do that that should be enough Down. 
right there. Bring it down a little bit. Now, I was going to paint the stars, but for those of you that want to get a little bit fancy, you could make your stars as well. So, I will show you. I will take a little bit to take that. You can put over each of the faces. And then, I would draw one star on like that. I would chop. chopping say three pieces on top of each other so that I can cut three stars at the same time. It just makes my life easier. Just hold it really tight while you're cutting. That way. That way. And that way. And then you get these beautiful little stars. So you can glue them on. So they already look really pretty, it's not too difficult to draw the back of the paper, stick them down, they're so pretty! And I might use another colour, so some of these scrap papers so I can stick those at the back. I've got some here that I can still use. You can see using all the scraps that you've got. Just utilising all the things don't waste. Use them. These are too tiny for you. You can practice on big ones and then do the tiny ones. There are lots of tiny ones there. I'm going to stick them down. Push, push, push. 